That was Pointing Fingers by Stacey Jackson. Of course, I have to dance in my chair because I can't stand up and do this. <laughs> I can definitely see that song in the clubs and everybody dancing to it. Good. I'm with what Wibbling in my chair. Were you? <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. That's awesome song. Oh, thank you. Now, how do you decide which song after completing an album that you want to release as a single? That is such a good question. Um, you know, because you're so subjective, you know, when you write a track, it's like, oh, this is great. You know, I mm-hmm. I have four kids at home. Um, I think they're very much, uh, they're very helpful, actually, because they're so in tune in what's going on and what, you know, kids are listening to. And so I kind of narrow it down that way. Um, if I know, you know, my 17-year-old will be saying to me, Oh my God! This is it, Mom. This is this is a hit. This is a hit. I know all my friends are dancing to this. I, you know, that's a, that's a testament right there. Exactly. Um, so, so that helps. But obviously, I have management and uh, and and people who are who surround me that are so sort of have like that sort of you know expertise in the industry. Mm-hmm. And so we'll narrow it down. But it's hard, you know. Like like I, I'm going to be now, you know launching something in May and then something else in July and then I think another track will come out by the end of the year and you know it's you you have to it's hard to decide is the answer it really is because like every one of those songs I wrote they're my babies you know it's like how do you choose you know Um, that's why going to somebody that really you know that manages me and manages what you know has been in the industry for a long time you know I value their I, I value their expertise well, it's great that you have a support system like that because sometimes you are on your own without yeah. anybody to help you choose what you want to do or what you want to put out there or just give their input of some kind. So it's yeah. great that you have all of those people. You know, are... I'm fortunate. I, uh, I've i been able to pull on a lot of influences over my life, and I have kids, and um, I've had experiences. And I think, um, you know, I can make the decision wisely i think but like mm-hmm. i also would never ever not um you know value the opinion of somebody who's actually been doing this a heck of a lot longer than me and yeah. so i can i can make suggestions and say you know i think this is great and why don't we release this and he you know my manager or, or you know any of the other people involved in in making these decisions would say well actually <laughs> the new sound is <laughs> is more like the, you know and so you know, I have to I have to understand that it's also a business, you know, like I, I love doing what I'm doing, but, you know, I've got to sell records, so I, ha- I have to be giving what people want to dance to and what people want to play and what, you know, and what people want to download, um, so I, I have to be smart about it, so sometimes yeah. it's hard, sometimes the ones that I think are the most close to my heart because it means the most to me might not necessarily work on the radio or in the dance floor, so mm-hmm. I just got to be... I just gotta let let it, open mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what emotions ran through you when you finally finished your album? Oh, I've never finished an album. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like any artist. It's like you did. You know, when you're looking at a bad painting, do that. Does anybody ever really finish it? Like, you know, do they ever really think it's done? Um, I'm probably in the middle of writing another one. Actually, I I have like a catalog of songs, um, and it's really just what. It, you know, first, you, before you even choose what you're going to release, you have to choose which ones actually end up on the album. Right. You know, so um, there's a lot, and um, it's hard. It's really, it's, it's hard because it's like, as, as for any for anybody who's an artist, can tell you that, like, um, you know, what what are you going to show? What are you going to showcase? What are you going to choose? What are you going to um, put out there? And you, every, you know, everybody wants everything to be out there, but you like, like I said before, you. You know, it's got to be the right stuff because, it, in retrospect, you, you know, not only are you putting out art or music, but you also want people to buy it, right? So, right, you got to be careful. Well, I noticed that all of the musicians, singers, songwriters that I've recently interviewed, they're all perfectionists, and the little tweaks that they think they need to make on the songs. Um, we may not even notice the difference no, if you had to put right. them side by side, but because we're of course not musically trained, we right. just love music. 
but yeah. you guys hear it, and that drives you oh, up we a wall when Trust you feel me, it. Trust me, we hear it. I get, I, I give my producers agita all the time about these things. I'm right. like, no, 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 no. This has to be harmony tastic, and this has to be like this, and I've got it. You know, and you know, they look, I, I. Yes, I, it's it's very you know especially when you have a, a vision you you want it to sound the end product a certain way, um, mm-hmm. so you know it's very difficult that even if it's the smallest thing even if it's one teeny weeny little backup <laughs> you know like like a harmony or or an ad lib somewhere in the you know because in your mind you know it belongs there and if it's right. not there everybody else for some reason in your head is not hearing it either. So, you know, but it's not true, obviously, because nobody knows that it's not supposed to be there. But but as the artist, you know that that BV is not on the track. Right. So, you know, it, it's it's really hard. But sometimes you also just got to give up a little bit of the control. you got to understand, like I said, mm-hmm. there are people that surround you who who have been doing this for a long time um, and are in the industry, and obviously you have to respect and value their decisions. So as difficult as it is as an artist you have to have a you have to have a head on your shoulders and and that's what i've been telling a lot of the young kids out there who are being um who are new to the game who are being developed at the moment they have to remember that even though they are artists mm-hmm. and you know they're working with a record label or they're working with you know uh, producers whatever they need to have a head on their shoulders i'm sorry they yes. have to remember that it is their life, and they have to know what are the budgets, what's going on, how much is ha- what, what's happening here. With that. like just to get a sense, you know, and not to relinquish too much of it because they need to yeah. know what's going on. Because being, it's very easy to be taken advantage of, you know, mm-hmm. and so they just have to be very smart about it. Um, and I've been working with a lot of young talent still here in the UK. Um, because I really, you know, it, it's great, but you, it, it's very easy for them to be like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever you say, I'll do whatever you want. Right, but, because they're just thrilled to death that somebody's paying attention to them and wants correct. to back them up, what, you know, whether okay. it be a label or somebody. And right. they just lose their selves in that, and mm-hmm. that's not a good thing. Exactly, and it can go bad the other way as well. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're too, too, too much on the other side where you're a little bit too much of a diva and you want a little bit too much of the control right. and you want too much, <laughs> then they're going to go, well, you know what, forget it. It's not going to work. Yeah. You know, I think the right thing is it's all about the teamwork in this business. You have to get the right people around you, and also you have to be able to ask the right questions and right. and be skeptical. But anyways, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying every part of it. I really am. I'm having fun. Well, it's, I can tell. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what what instruments do you play, if any, and do you have a favorite? Uh, I play the piano. Um, I'm horrible at reading music. I play by ear, so I'll I'll put the melody down on piano, or I'll hum hum something into my into my phone lately. Even that's what's happening lately. I'm like, you know, sometimes I actually write too much that I can't catch up with myself. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I'll just I mean just hum something into my phone and then I'll go and play it on the piano. So it doesn't necessarily come from the instrument at the moment. It could be just in my brain. Some you know it's funny. Well, <laughs> thankfully, we have phones that you can do that with now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, I probably would have had a tape recorder or something back in the day. Right. But but now it's like I'll just yeah I'll hum something into my into my phone, which you know, and then I'll meet with like my my writing partners or my producer and be like, okay, this is what I hummed on the beach while I was on holiday, you know, <laughs> and here's my phone and listen to this, and then all of a sudden they'll become pointing fingers, you know, so it starts it starts from something very, you know, simple like that, and, and then it ends up what it is, which is great. You know, where's the weirdest place that you probably have come up with a song in your head and needed to, you know, put it in your phone right away? Uh, on an airplane. I guess. On an airplane. <laughs> yeah, on an airplane. Or on a beach. It's happened to me both places. Uh, where else? Oh, well, I was getting a massage, and that was very frustrating. Oh, no, that one's good. Because I had, I had this tune in my head to, he was doing this, like, thumpy, thumpy thing on my back, you know? Uh-huh. And, like, I actually, from the thumping beat, I actually got something in my head and going, oh, I think I felt the rhythm. It was just such oh. an odd thing. But, of course, I didn't have my phone with me because I'm, like, on a <laughs> massage table. Right. So, but um, I ended up remembering it. Um, so luckily I sang that into my into my phone. But, um, yeah, sometimes, like, I can just hear beats and, and I'll just 
right into my brain. Well, I, but I, I mean, would say so that's weird. the first I ever heard of somebody getting a beat from a massage. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly right. But you asked me what was the weirdest, and right. I guess that would be. But it comes to me whenever, and sometimes it could be like weeks or months where like nothing comes mm-hmm. to me, and like I'll be like focused on so many other things in my life that I'm just completely distracted, and so like I just can't zone in but then when i'm relaxed <laughs> lands massage or on a beach somewhere um is when i feel the most free and that's mm-hmm. when i start feeling you know feeling it and that's when i start writing the most stuff like the best yeah it, it clears your mind probably you know because mm-hmm. we're normally thinking about 600 things a day you know in our minds when when you can relax like that then it has more open space to bring something else in yeah exactly that's exactly what it is yeah. <laughs> well, later this year, um, you'll be working, you'll be heading up a campaign for Breast Cancer Charities of America called Don't Give It Up, Live It Up. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us more about that charity event. It's something that's very close to my heart because, unfortunately, my mom died of breast cancer. Oh, don't freak me out. My mother's going through her chemo at the moment, like literally. Oh, my, my parents are going to hear about your mom. That's they've, awful. Um, they've come a long way since she passed. It's been almost 22 years now. So okay. Okay. No, I, have I know faith that. In okay. It now. All right. Fine. Yes, that's, that's absolutely correct. They have come a long way. I think she was in an early stage because of early detection, which is great. Um, but she is going through chemo. Her numbers were quite high, and so she had to go through the whole process. Um, and then she'll do the radiation, everything, and it and it's because it was become so real to me because I realized how much I not just depend on my mother, but like I mean, she's like one of my best friends. You know, I speak right. to her 150 million times a day, and 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 then of course when I'm on tour, and you know, she comes to London and she fills that sort of emotional gap with my kids. She's here um, with you know with with my family, and she's mm-hmm. there, and and I know that there's somebody here that, like, is in charge, you know? Right. Um, and my husband's around also, but, like, I mean, he goes to, he goes to work. But, like, my mom's around, around, like, during the day. And and now that she's not, it's it's been very hard. And, uh, and the support of family is just so, so critical. I think family is so, so important, you know, in anything that anybody chooses to do. Exactly. Um, so, anyways, yeah, this is a big, a big event. The launch of my album is in May, and then uh, we're doing a massive, uh, big red carpet celebrity event for for Brit Week, in fact, in mm-hmm. Los Angeles, and it's going to be for breast cancer charities. So, um, it's going to be a great event in Los Angeles. So I hope people can come out for that. It's going to be like May first or second in LA and West Hollywood, and then I'm doing another one in London, and I'll be performing as well in. Chicago, Las Vegas, and New York. So You're coming to Chicago? My... I'm in Chicago. You're You'll in ha- Chicago? I... Yeah. Yes. I think I'm going to be performing in Chicago, but I'll let you know. Um, I hope so. I'm doing, um, what am I doing? I'm doing, uh, you know, my, all of my dates will be up on my website, okay, stacyjackson.com, and on my Facebook and stuff. Because I don't want to tell you if I'm what I'm doing and, and it changes because it's oh, yeah, far ahead know. right now. Um, right. It's sometime in May. Um, but yes, I will be in Chicago, Vegas, LA, New York, blah, 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 lots of lots of places. Good, so good. really looking forward to it. Yeah. So definitely you have well, to come out and see. Oh, I will. I definitely will. Uh, and, and David's in New York, and maybe he can get out to see you when you're out there too. That yeah, would be great. Yeah, I yeah. come in New York. I want to say around the 15th, 16th of May. I don't know. I honestly, these dates are all just coming in now. I'm, right. I'm doing a bunch of stuff in in um, in England. I'm doing Formula One. I'm doing mm-hmm. a big show for the Formula One, like the race car thing. I'm doing a, a boxing matches, uh, rugby matches. Um, wow. Yeah, crazy. Lots of festivals. I'm doing Gay Pride um, in the UK. So a bunch of events over here. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's nonstop. No, you're sure stop. going to be busy. Yes. yes, I am. I am, but I love it. And then you know, then I juggle the kids, and it's all crazy, but it's all good. Right. <laughs> now, if there's any way for us to help out, like donating for the breast cancer um, oh, event, wow. how can yeah, we well, do that? Yeah, well, that will be up on my website. All okay, the information good. will be put up on stacyjackson.com. Um, we're going to start um, with a big public service announcement that's just been lovely edited and is going to start going out in the next week or so. My mm-hmm. video is going to be released also in 
um, in the U.S., so you'll start.